So please, sit comfortably. <clears throat> now, in our uh, family style of koan introspection, following the Takucho Rinzai line, uh, uh, we are introduced to koan uh, practice uh, with one of the great Dharmakaya koans, almost always for us, Mu. And we play with it, uh, and we explore it, and it plays with us, and it explores us. Um, and then we don't want to settle into one metaphor, so we move over to another one, usually uh, the sound of the single hand. After we have introduced ourselves into the, the great matter of, of, of intimacy and uh, um, boundlessness, we then have like a little short corpse uh, uh, called miscellaneous koans, uh, which are um, often, com they're complete koans, but they're very brief, little lines, and in the, in the 50 or 100, depending on who's counting, um, actually, our, our, our little booklet, I think it says 38, but most of them have A, B, C, D, E, F, and one of, uh, one of our uh, uh, old hands at one point said, James, there's no fucking 38 colon. <laughs> <laughs> it's 106. <laughs> so we need two more. So we need, no, we need two more. <laughs> um, what it is, it's the short course. It, it teaches us the language and it allows us uh, uh, the style of our of, of koan introspection practice. Um, always rooted, of course, in sasin, um, which is the primary practice. Then, it, in the Takajo style, we, we then formally go through the great, uh, many of the great, several of the great collections. Uh, um, and we start with uh, the gateless gate, the, the um, uh, Wu Guan. And, and at that point, we have to memorize them. Uh, uh, and my, my uh, because I have absolute inability uh, to memorize anything, it, 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 it was a truly horrible thing. When people would ask me, how do I sit on the pillow with a koan? I say, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sitting on the pillow trying to memorize the koan well enough so that I can uh, uh, get into the conversation in the doksan room with the teacher. And, uh, uh, and then, because in the particular teacher I worked with, if you, if you go quickly enough through that case, uh, he, he might uh, um, allow you to go to the next case. And so that, would be, that was my major goal in this list, uh, to not have to memorize uh, these things. <laughs> and I can tell you, after completing, completing uh, formal Cohen introspection practice and all the books that we do and uh, the miscellaneous stuff that we that we follow after the books, I can now recite one koan. Uh, 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 a student of the way comes to Chow Cho and asks, "Does the dog have Buddha nature?" Chow Cho says, "No." That's it. <laughs> One of the, the things, and this is a long way around the barn to say that right after you get that case, which is case one in, in the gateless gate, then you come to case two in the gateless gate, which has to be the longest koan in the entire collection. And that's what we're going to talk about this evening. Uh, I can, um, while I can't recite it uh, precisely as the text would have it, I can tell it. Um, it is an interesting one. Uh, Chow Cho uh, was uh, in the habit of one of the great masters of our, of our line, was in the habit of giving a, a Dharma talk on Sundays. Uh, and, uh, and not only was the monastic community there, but also villagers, people from, from town, would come in and, and hear the talk. Um, and he would uh, begin to notice that in the back of the crowd there was this old man and he would, uh, uh, but then when everybody broke up for coffee hour, he uh, disappeared. So finally, one day, uh, um, uh, Chow Cho quickly went around instead of shaking hands with everybody as they left. He scootled out to the back and uh, uh, said, who are you to this guy? 
And the guy says, ah, you found me out. Obviously, I'm not a human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, so, so what are you? He says, well, as it happens, I was abbot on this very mountain a gazillion years ago. And uh, now there's a little play in that because Chow Cho is the name of the mountain. And so Chow Cho, the abbot, the current abbot, is in some sense speaking to Chow Cho, who was the abbot many years in the past. And he uh, says, the old Chow Cho says, so, I was abbot on this mountain, and I was giving Dharma talks on Sunday, and uh, in the Q&A afterwards, somebody said, So, does the person who has awakened to who they really are, if the person who has seen uh, uh, through form and emptiness, who has discovered intimacy and boundlessness, is that person bound by the law of cause and effect or not? An interesting question for those of us in this Jukai session uh, who are thinking about uh, uh, what does this all mean in this great <laughs> way of liberation that the biggest ceremony of our community is undertaking um, ethical codes, uh, you know, vows of, of relationship. Uh, well, says the old Chow Cho, I told that person that the person who, such a person, any individual who has awakened to the great way, who has seen through uh, self and other and uh, has achieved liberation, that person is not bound by the laws of cause and effect. And ever since then, I've been reincarnating as a fox spirit, which is considered a bad thing. Um, in, in our culture, maybe a skunk spirit. Uh, 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 clearly, his karma got tangled and there was something wrong. And so he said, I'm, I'm screwed. Uh, can you help me? And the new Chow Cho uh, says, sure. And so, um, because this is you know, a story with, with its contained parts, the old Chow Cho makes his bows, and then he says, Sir, uh, uh, has, a, has a person who has awakened to their true nature, uh, um, is that person bound by the law of cause and effect or not? Chow Cho replied, and it's interesting because you get these different translations, and uh, um, um, they are variously uh, the awakened person is at one with the law of cause and effect. The awakened person does not evade the law of cause and effect. Um, and a couple of other variations on that thing that we can get a little, tr little triangulation on. We can begin to see the intimacy of, of the awakened person and the laws of cause and effect. The, issues with which we are engaging here uh, um, in these, uh, in all the lead up to tomorrow. So, the old fox spirit says, thanks, I 